Welcome. So maybe you can answer this question. What exactly does play sand for a toddler sand tray, food coloring, a baby dosing syringe, and a couple of ice cube trays have to do with learning about complex medical and drug research? Stay tuned and we're going to get right into this activity. Welcome to Science at Home. Welcome, I'm Deb Bailey at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences in Raleigh, and this is one of our DIY Science at Home segments. We're gonna get right into our activity, which is column chromatography. And that is a very complex and very precise tool that scientists in pharmaceuticals and medical research use in the lab to separate a specific chemical out from a mixture of things so they can investigate that one chemical, which may be the answer to a disease or to a, a, a industrial solution that they need. So column chromatography separates and isolates that one item that they want so they can then do a bunch of chemical tests on it. So we're gonna get right into this activity. Stay tuned and let's get our gear together. Okay, to get started, I have a cookie sheet that I really don't care whether I get it dirty or not. I need a tall soda glass. I need four of these eight ounce plastic cups and I've got them labeled. One's gonna have my food coloring mixture and of course I need some food coloring. So I have that as well. I also am going to need some 70% alcohol, so I ha and also I need to have a cup labeled and have some alcohol in there as well. I need some tap water in another cup, so I've got that. Three pencils, and I also need to have some sand. As I mentioned, it needs to be toddler sand. It needs to be clean, very fine, not mixed with anything, so the toddler sand works great. And the other things I also have on hand, I have a 10 cc baby dosing syringe. I've got three eyedroppers, so I'll need those as well. A teaspoon, I have a funnel from the kitchen, and masking tape, so this is a major production here. And last but not least, a cotton ball, and I also have two of these dispenser uh, ice cube trays, and basically they're the easy dispense kind, though it doesn't matter. They just need to be white, and the more slots in them, the better. These have 16 in each, which will be great. So this is what we need to get started, so let's get to it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is make up my solution of my dyes. So I'm going to take my cup that's labeled food coloring. I'm going to fill it not quite to the top, just pour the isopropyl alcohol in. That looks like enough. We'll set that aside. And then I need to have one teaspoon each of red and blue. So just squeeze out some teaspoonful of each color into your teaspoon. Drop it into the solution, mix it up, and do the same with the red. Okay, the next thing that I need to do once I've got my ink all set up is I have to get my barrel prepared. This is going to be my chromatography column. So I'm going to take that syringe, I'm gonna pull the plunger out because I don't need it. I'm gonna set that off on the side. And what I need to do with this is take my cotton ball and just take a piece of cotton that is about the size of your pinky and push it down into the column Take one of the pencils and just tap it down in there to cover the hole because that's what we need to do to keep the sand in. That's what we're going to do next. Now, in order to work with our sand, we need to prepare to uh, be able to hold our column here while we need both hands to set up our column. So what you want to do is take two pencils, place them across the mouth of the glass. You're going to want them just far enough apart so that they can hold the, the plunger right, I mean, excuse me, so that they can hold our uh, little barrel here just like that. What we next need to do is tape them in place. So I'm gonna take a piece of masking tape and I'm going to just put it over the pencils, tape it to the side of the glass in front and in back of my barrel. So there we go. Okay, so now we are ready to move on to the next part. We are going to get our water. 
which we have right here, and an eyedropper. And we're going to take a little bit of water and just drop it down into the barrel so that it gets the cotton totally soaked. We want that cotton nice and wet before we add our sand. So it's going to drip out of the bottom. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the water will drip out of the bottom. And you just take the pencil again, eraser side down, and just use the pencil to tap the cotton against the bottom of the barrel so it's nice and snug there. Now we're going to move that aside and we're going to get our sand. And what you want to do here, I've cleaned off my teaspoon so it's nice and clean and dry. And I'm going to take sand and my funnel, place it in the top here, and I'm just going to add enough sand so that it comes to the lines. The barrel has lines on the side of it, and a 10 ml barrel will have lines, and you at between 8 and 10 is where you want to land the sand. So about halfway between the 8 and the 10 mark, and that will take care of that. The next thing you want to do is we need to get our sand wet. I know we said we needed dry sand to start with. That's so we can get it in the barrel and make sure there are no air pockets in the sand. So another thing you can always do is take your pencil again and just tap it down a little. But now go ahead and use your eyedropper and add enough water to this barrel so that maybe you just fill up the barrel. You want to have the water going through the sand and dripping again out the bottom so that you have uh, all of your sand nice and wet. And this is a good time again to make sure there are no air bubbles in the sand. Just go ahead, tap it down, and make sure everything's nice and level and let the water drip out. Because once the water has gone through the sand, we're going to prime it now with alcohol. Alcohol is going to be our wash solution. We're going to be putting the ink in that we want to separate, and you have to keep washing through with something. And in this case, we're using alcohol because alcohol and these particular uh, colors, they separate best by their electrical charges. So between the water in the sand, the alcohol in the wash, and the charges, uh, positive and negative, that are on the dye, that will help separate the two colors from each other. We've mixed the red and the blue. So use your other eyedropper and do the same thing again. Just put a bunch of alcohol through the column. You can even fill the barrel and just let it go down through the column. And that will now prime our sand column so that it will be ready for the next step. So let that work and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're ready to get started now. This is the main scene here. We've been setting up for our activity. Now we're going to start. We are going to be adding ink to our column, and we're going to continue after the ink soaks in by adding more alcohol so that the sand top is always covered with liquid, first with the ink, then with the alcohol. We're going to immediately move over to our ice cube trays, we're going to hold our chromatography column over each one of these slots. We're going to collect 20 drops in the first one, the most back, the most furthest in the back or front, wherever you want to start. But then you're going to move every 20 drops. You're going to just collect, count them off, and then you're going to keep moving. Because what you should see is the colors will move down through the sand, and they're going to come out and they're going to separate. So you'll have colorless to pink to purple, to dark blue, to light blue, and back to colorless again. So we're going to get started here in just a moment, and then we'll begin. OK, so we have our final results here. I just wanted to give you the bird's eye view of what the final chromatography separations would look like here. What we've got, starting over here, is colorless, which is the first thing that came out of our column. It moved into a slight pink and a darker pink. Then we moved down into a light purple, some dark purples, and then it moved down into blues, light blues, and then coming around here all the way down back to colorless again. So what this shows is that the process that we used can separate out the dyes, uh, pink, 
purple, blue, and then colorless. If you want to slow this down and separate it out even finer, you can put a little bit more cotton in the bottom of your column. If you put too much cotton, it will take a very long time for the drops to come through the column. If you put too little, the drops will rush through the column and you won't get any separation. So it's usually helpful with your column to put the cotton somewhere right around the 1 ml mark on here. Um, if you go up as far as the 2, that might be just a little too much. If you go less than the 1, it's going, to, it's going to be too quick for the drops. They won't separate. So there we go. There's the results of our process. So what did all of this mean? We showed that we can separate out red food coloring from blue food coloring using some baby sand. How does that translate to a research lab? In a research lab, they use specially treated beads instead of sand in a finely tuned column, and they run their mixture of chemicals through that column, and they use chemical characteristics, things like the size of the molecule or its salinity, or an electrical charge or pH. They use some chemical trait to force those chemicals apart inside the column with those specially treated beads. And then each one of those chemicals comes out of the column at its own pace, one at a time. You collect each one separately into its own fraction, and then you're able to analyze each one of those individually. That way, if there's a particular chemical that might make a great new drug for a particular disease, you've managed to isolate it, you can run it through other machines, do other tests, and then go ahead and do more work to bring it to market as a helpful new drug. So that's column chromatography. It's all about separating things out of liquid solutions. Thanks for being with us and stay tuned. We'll have more of these in the future. You all have a good day. Bye-bye.